Hi, good evening. Here we are back again. What's up, guys? How you doing? So tonight I wanted to talk about one of my favorite beers ever, which is a Kolsch. And I fell in love with Kolsch in Germany when I studied there in college. And actually, it was the first alcohol that I ever drank. So it was, it's just awesome. So I, I wanted to share that with you today. Um, before that, I want to just put a couple shout outs here. This is Teacher Appreciation Week. And if you really appreciate teachers, you would go and buy them a gift card to the local liquor store. Absolutely. Because if you have had your children at home with you, you are now seeing what it's really like to be a teacher. Imagine 25 <laughs> to 30 of them in a classroom at a time, right? You may be having two, three, four, I don't know. Yeah. But 25 of your kids. So a gift card to the local liquor store will really help them out, find a way to get it to them. And so, we've got liquor stores, we've got, you know, the big box liquor stores, we've got the ABCs, we've got the Total Wine and More, but we also have some great local liquor stores. A lot of the bars are being kind of package stores. Mm -hmm. I've actually got my hat on here tonight. We're, uh, we love 99 Bottles, which is downtown. Fantastic bar, but also carries an incredible selection of local beers and wine. So, and it, internet beers from all over. All this over. is one of the yes. best places to go and get beer locally. And especially if you're trying to find something special for someone that they've never had before, here is where you're gonna find it at 99 Bottles. Because most of the beers that I see when they're up yeah. on there, I've never seen before. Yeah, and, and they've got an incredibly knowledgeable staff, but I do have to say, Mark, who is the godfather of Sarasota Craft Beer, is the owner there, and yeah. he is absolutely fantastic. So if you're looking for something special, he's the one to give you the answers on. Yeah, so they actually usually have some type of coals rotating through. So currently they have a Captain Lawrence um, Clearwater Kolsch, right? Clearwater Kolsch out of New York, yep. Yeah. Which yeah. is an American interpretation because we're going to talk i i want to know more about kolsch's too kolsch is kind of more frank's cup of tea so i've got some questions for him about what makes a kolsch and what's there but they actually have a great american interpretation of that exactly but they usually have reisdorf which is an actual german um brand of kolsch that they rotate through every so often as well i know I, i've had it there three or four times in the past year year and a half that i've been going there so you try it out see what they got and they have any type of beer selection that you would like all right so to, so what so we, we're talking about kolsch's i've heard that before what is a kolsch it's a beer right it's a beer and specifically a beer that's from cologne germany mm -hmm. um so as we look at the regions of germany each of them have a different kind of beer that kind of grew up there mm -hmm. and became special to that area okay. So Cologne had a wheat beer kind of called- And Cologne's a city, right? Yes, yes. Cologne's okay. a city. It's in the Western part of Germany on the Rhine River. Um, it's a huge industrial city. Um, it has about a million people living in it or so. And you lived there for a little while? Yeah, I lived there for about six months when I was 19 Excellent. years old cool. with a host family, um, which was quite interesting. I had <laughs> three host brothers who were three, nine and 12 years old. And they just kept me busy all the time. Yeah. It was awesome because when I went there, I spoke like the three-year-old, but when I left, I spoke like the parents. Excellent. Um, because they spoke no English at all. So um, and now they should be, holy shit, this is like 25 years ago. Yeah. So they should be, <laughs> <laughs> wow, now oh, I really feel old. <laughs> all right, so, but, it has to be made there. So when I was in Cologne, there were like 30 some different breweries around there. And the centerpiece of the city of Cologne is the Cologne Cathedral. Okay. It is the quintessential Gothic style of cathedral. It's the second largest cathedral in Europe awesome. um, of Gothic style. Mm -hmm. The twin spires on it are the highest spires in Europe for a twin spire yeah. cathedral. Um, it's really cool because Cologne goes back all the way to the Romans. Okay. And about 50 AD or so. Mm -hmm. And the site that they chose for the church is the same site that a Roman temple was on. Wow, very cool. So when you go to the church today, you can go down underneath 
and they have an archaeological site where they're actually excavating cool. all of the Roman um, ruins and stuff and like artifacts that. Artifacts and the like. Yeah, which is kind of interesting considering yeah. you're going to a Catholic church and here's a pagan faith below it. All right. Then what Cologne, the Cologne Cathedral is also known for is it is the resting place of the shrine of the three kings. So if you know your story of Jesus and all that kind of stuff, you know the three kings came and brought him gifts and supposedly they are resting there. Um, the, the coffin, whatever you want to call it there, so in, sarcophagus, sarcophagus, sir, yeah. is incredible. It's all gold, all this kind of stuff. Very Indiana Jones-ish. Kind of, <laughs> <Yeah>. exactly. <laughs> and then the, th the best part of it though is you can go up and take a tour of the roof area and the towers of it. Oh, and the spires? Yeah. Awesome. And it is just incredible to go up there because you can see for miles and miles. Mm -hmm. And what what was really interesting about this church is in World War II, Cologne is in the Ruhr Valley and was a very important uh, industrial city for the Nazis. And so the only thing left standing in Cologne at the end of the war was the cathedral. Wow. And the reason for that is they, the bomber pilots used the cathedral as the starting point for their bombing <laughs> runs. So it would, so it, as they came in, they would hit everything after that. But exactly, that and they would come in from a certain direction and know they yeah. had to go that way and off. So it stayed um, pretty well intact, except for, I believe it's the left spire. And um, in 1944, some of the bombing raids damaged the spire to the point where it was about to tip over. Oh, no. And in the middle of the night, German citizens came out and they filled the hole that the bomb had created with mortar and rubble to keep the spire from falling wow. down. And um, you used to be able to see that, but in the early 2000s, I believe, they decided to um, reconstruct it to make it look like how it like was the back then. Yeah. Um, but so if you've ever read Ken Follett's book, The Pillars of the Earth, that kind of reminds me of the that, building of this cathedral. That was based in England though, right? Exactly, yeah. that mm -hmm. one's based in England. But because when we look at the cathedral, it was started to be built in um, 1248, and they were building it for about 200 years and it came to a halt in 1473, incomplete. And then in the 1840s, they began to finish their construction of it and it was finally finished in 1880. What caused them to stop? Money. Money. Just like everything else, it yep. all runs on money, right? You guys weren't paying your indulgences and all of that kind of stuff. So the church just didn't have it, um, the money to do that. And building this was so expensive because when you walk into it, this, when we look at Gothic style, this mm -hmm. is the flying buttresses and yep. all of that. So the whole inside is open. And for them to construct that back then and not have metal supports and stuff for the yep. roofing, it was pretty incredible. Definitely. So um, when we look at the cathedral, that's the center point of Cologne. And if you go there, uh, you need to see it. It's the most visited place in Germany. Wow. Um, it's a UNESCO heritage site. About 20,000 people a year, or a day, a day, I'm sorry, go there. Now, I have a funny story about this. When I was living there, we had an Irish soccer team come and play the FC Cologne team. Okay. And the whole plaza around the cathedral yep. was filled with Irishmen. Oh, <laughs> and they like their cold beer, I'm assuming. Yeah. Uh, well, no. No? Okay. What we found is we got there after they had left to go to the game, and there must have been three, four, five thousand bottles of Irish whiskey <laughs> all over the thing, empty. And some of my friends actually went to that game. Yeah. And they talk about being on the trains or the trams that are taking them to the stadium. And they're so packed that you cannot move. And one of my friends, he was on there and he talked about this Irish guy that was so drunk that just had to take a piss and he just did. Yes, did. <laughs> so... It is a huge place that everybody travels right. to, all right? Um, so, but Kolsch, though, is uh, made there and has to be within roughly 30 miles of the cathedral. Um, and as I said before, you have to see the, the twin spires of the cathedral 
from your roof of your brewery, brewery. which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, so, so what? Uh, so what makes a Kolsch? What okay. Makes it? Yeah. So Kolsch is a derivative of a V beer, or, right, or a wheat beer, and this one sooner is the first brand that really kind of um, solidified what the Kolsch was. Because when we think of wheat beers, we think of them being kind of hazy. Yeah, I'm, I'm normally not a big fan of wheat beers. Exactly. So, but this is fantastic. Yeah, so what they do is they lager the beer after they create it. And when we look at- Lager it, what's that mean? So lagering it is a process where you're taking the beer and you're starting at roughly 45 degrees and over a three to four week period, you're reducing it down to about 32 degrees. And what that does is that the sediments in the beer fall out and it creates this crystal clear beer that we're drinking today. And that's what really makes it different from the wheat beers. And also the big difference is most lagers, the yeast that they use mm -hmm. is um, does its stuff on the bottom of the beer, all right? Kolsch uses the top fermenting yeast. Okay, so it floats up to the surface. Exactly, and so they, and there's a couple stories too where they, their city council and stuff tried to pass laws that prohibited any beers that use bottom um, fermenting yeast to be used in the city or any beers that came from them to be used in the city. To specialize so, their beers. Exactly. So the Sooner came out with its Kolsch in the 1800s, but it really got recognized about 1918, right after World War II, mm -hmm. or World War One. sorry. And um, when we look at that idea of it, the Kolsch then became the style. And when I was in Germany, there were about, oh, I think 36 breweries. Okay. And what they do, and the way they serve Kolsch is, we have, I'm drinking out of a 0 0.3 cup, and he's drinking out of a 0 0.4 cup. But the real cup size that they drink out of is a 0 0.2, so a little bit smaller than this. And they call them, um, oh, what is the word for it? uh stans okay. and what it means is rod or spike and that's what the glass is that's what the glass sure. is and what you do is you put your glass there and when you empty it all right you got your beer decal under it when it it's a beer empty, what a beer decal so you've seen these in the bars that's the correct name for them a beer decal so they put it you have your beer decal here when it's empty the waitress comes around and she's carrying a tray that's constantly full of 0.2 glasses of Kolsch. She picks up your empty, gives you another one and puts a tick on your beer decal. And you keep doing that until you're done. And then when you're done on your empty one, you put your beer decal on top. The waitress comes around, she picks up your beer decal, sees how many ticks are on it. That's your receipt. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And knows how much to charge yeah. you. Um, so it's kind of really interesting to go and do that. But what's fascinating about Kolsch too is that each different bar is only allowed to carry one Kolsch brand. So if you really want to try lots of different Kolsches, you've got to go bar hopping. Exactly, <laughs> which is awesome. Or crawling. And so when I was there, my friends and I, we tried to go and find every um, Kolsch style or every brewery there was in the representation of it. How do you pronounce that, Luke? Stanga. Stanga. All right. So that's what they call the glasses, Stanga. All right. So I just want to give a shout out to my son, Luke, who's been our Luke. advertiser and our promotion specialist and uh, general behind the scenes guy here. And, helping and, us and out. he just had something important happen this week, didn't he? He did. He just graduated with honors, summa cum laude. Ah. from FSU. Fantastic. Cheers to you, sir. In three years. Yep. So he saved his parents yep. a lot of money. <laughs> Plus, doing that has allowed him to go to the University of Cincinnati on a fellowship to do his master's program, which is saving his parents a lot more money. All right? So we're super proud of Luke And even more, imp and just as important as that, Luke also had another big thing happen. Luke turned 21. Exactly. <laughs> so what's going to be awesome is Luke's going to be up in Cincinnati where there are tons of awesome breweries. And Sean and I are going to go visit him sometime yes, in the fall 
and do that. What did you say, Lou? <laughs> what kind of nightmare? <laughs> it's gonna be a great time. He's gonna show us around, show us the local scene, and uh, we're gonna exactly. Be so it's, I'm a little sad because I've lost one of my designated drivers, yes. but thankfully Grace is around and she can be a designated exactly, driver. Exactly, absolutely. Um, so as when we look at Kolsch, it is this regional beer uh, around Cologne. It's really, a, I call it a lawnmower beer because it's perfect for drinking in the summertime because they average about four and a half to 5%. And... It's funny because it almost, it's got, you say that it was a wheat beer, but it almost has a fruity taste yeah, to it. Yeah, and that comes from the hops that they use mm -hmm. in it. And it just is an easy drinking beer and you can drink tons of it. So locally, you can go to places like Total Wine. And what we got was they sell these mini cakes, which are about a gallon and a half of the beer. And they have a goffle and fru. Um, and also sometimes they carry Reisdorf. Those are the three that we find most common in the area yep. and then you can also as i said goffel yep. and then sometimes you can also now, find yeah peters peters and like you said so these ones that we're looking at that are colches they are true colches which mm -hmm. means that they were brewed within 30 miles of the of the the spires and they could see it and everything like that from germany but a lot of people i think have duplicated that and that's what we talked about with 99 bottles they actually have some american breweries Yep. that are duplicating the style of that. Once again, they can't be called Kolsch's because they're not from actually Cologne, Germany, correct? So, so the terminology that you're gonna see on it is Kolsch style beer. And that gets around the legal stuff that makes you where yep. they could sue you and all that kind of stuff. Yep. So uh, here in town, yep. J-Dubs has a great um, example of this called Poolside, Poolside Kolsch. And they do that all year round. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you want to taste one that's made locally, that's a great example of it. And right now, as we're coming on to summertime, this is when Kolsch's will be, um, the seasonal production of them will come up. So we'll see a lot We'll see a lot of different American breweries doing, doing, the, that doing right their now. own versions of those. Exactly, because they want to have that good summer beer yep. that's easy drinking in the heat and all of that. Yep. Um, so it's not it's not as as bitter as an IPA. No, um, IPA. no, it's got it's it's very smooth. And like I said, th these almost have a fruity taste to them. Yeah. Almost. So um, I think that that's all we really have for you tonight. Uh, it has been a pleasure to share my favorite beer with you guys, and we will see you next week. Now next week though. We won't be on Tuesday night. We will be on Wednesday night doing, doing a this. little flippy floppy. Yeah. Um, and we think oh, we'll leave the tease out there for yeah. the weekend and you can see what we're doing next weekend. We, we got a, a fun surprise for you next week, though. Exactly. Prost. Prost.